Now, it was a project designed to project Ghana as a deeply religious nation, a cathedral to provide a historic opportunity to put God at the center of our nation's affairs and serves as a symbol of our eternal and continuing gratitude to him for the blessings he continues to share and bestow on our nation. But it has become the center of a massive controversy, dragging along the reputation of even men of God. The controversy is there, not least because of the over 300 million that has been sunk into this project. Tonight, we'll interrogate the main issues plaguing this project and ask if it's time to put it to rest with a man who has led the crusade for accountability around the project from the very beginning. My guest is the Honorable Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, the Member of Parliament for Nocton, that we know for sure. But as for ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee, it might change tomorrow. So you're welcome, sir. I hope you are doing well. I'm well. Good to see you. I'm doing very well, too. But the, the key point I was asking, whether you are still ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee, yes, it's I an important I'm, point, though. Yes, for now. I'm Mindful I'm, of the current things happening within the uh, minority bench. Yeah, I understand some of your colleagues have filed petitions. 60 of them, you are one of them, right? I can confirm that for now I'm still the ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Yes. And I've always been available to serve my party in whatever capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, I've never really lobbied for anything uh, since I came into national politics. When I was going to the, de the Deputy Minister for Information role, I had no idea until mm -hmm. the uh, former President Mills called me, God bless okay. you. So same for when former President Mahama appointed me as Deputy Minister for Education. I didn't love it for it. I had no idea that that's where the coach will be deploying me. Do you pray and, for it? And Do you pray that you are giving proof? Ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee, same. I didn't know that that was, that was... Many people had rather anticipated that probably I'll serve on the Education Committee. Yes, because, you'll be a Deputy Minister there. A deputy minister. But the, the party president. leadership thought that I will be better off serving as a ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. So it's the same attitude. If the new leadership, uh, you know, we have a new national chairman, general secretary, if they decide with parliamentary leadership that I should stay, I'm happy to stay. If I, they want me to move on to other things, I'm happy. As, as, a, as a good football player, you should be obedient, you should be a team player, and you should be ready to be deployed anywhere party leadership or the coach decides. You are sounding like you are not one of the 60 that penned a petition asking for broader consultation, opposing the current decision. Uh, what I've heard is that there are two groups uh, okay. uh, writing petitions and all of that. Uh, my attitude has always been that it is better for internal party matters not to play out in the open. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody really uh, goes to town with mm -hmm. dirty linens. You don't wash it in public. Um, if there are concerns, legitimate concerns, we can resolve it internally. So I'm not one to discuss internal party matters um, on, on TV or on, on radio. But, but you are one to have left a vetting committee and obviously dented the reputation of the Harun who led minority at the time and created the impression that they were not doing the job they were supposed to do. That was you that's, way back then. That's your interpretation. Oh, yes, but that, the reality that the people my, of this republic believe in. My resignation letter to the right honorable speaker was mm -hmm. very clear that it was on principle and that I would not, at the time and even now, mm -hmm. divulge the reasons. I clearly was unhappy with developments within that committee. And, and I think that is a culture that we must encourage, where when you are uh, given a job okay. you know, within an organization, you are not happy with certain things, you should be you can able live to... honorably. Yeah, I mean, that is a very, I know it's a reputable committee. Hardly people, happens many, in the Republic of Many Ghana. people lobby to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that culture of resignation, which we lack, it's not good. I mean, you see what what is happening at the finance ministry, and he's still holding on, he's mm -hmm. messing all of us up, destroying this country. It's not a good culture. So I, I think that instead of being vilified and being accused of probably setting in motion... Uh, the current what, happenings what, within what, the past. I, I think it's most unfair. It's most oh, really? Unfair. It's most unfair to me. Uh, because people uh, can track back the history. I mean, you... you, you and we know you. You are not the Tim Russell. You are not the one to say that, no, even things are going well, you leave. You leave for reasons. Yes. And one of the reasons that have been cited is that we have not heard in the history of this country before that the member of a prestigious committee lives. And at the time, we were having conversations about whether or not some ministers should be approved. 
And it happened. And people continuously raise concerns about why you left and why, contrary to the opinion out there, we still had the ministers approve. Some of them with very huge numbers that without the participation of the minority would have been possible. So those connections, any person will come to some conclusion that it is related in any way. But the question I want to ask you is, on which side are you? Do you support the stay or go path? Or you think the party's decision must reign? My honest view mm -hmm. in this whole brouhaha is that we must put party interest first. Mm. And we must stop taking sides. Mm. It should not be about who you support or who you don't support. We are colleagues. We all belong to a team. Can we just engage? Colleagues are concerned that they saw the announcement mm -hmm. in the media. Legitimately, colleagues deserve to be engaged by the party. I think that that's what we should be doing, urging the party leadership. I have heard the general secretary say that because many of us, we are on recess, and many of us okay. are in the constituencies, you know the primaries are, are imminent. So they wanted the communication to go to the speaker. They don't know how it got leaked. Uh, but clearly, um, the process has not gone smoothly. Uh, something is amiss. Instead of rushing to take sides, which will not help internal party cohesion, I would say that let us all engage. National party leadership led by Chairman John C. Asidu in Ketia, they can even bring in the Council of Elders, the General Secretary of the party, should engage the caucus and then we can move forward. I will want to be seen as one who contributed to easing tensions, calming nerves, bringing everybody together, and not one who rather inflamed passions and, as it were, deepened the cracks. So I'm not going to answer that question about being here or being there. Every camp has their support, and once you say you are for this side, then you antagonize the other side, mm -hmm. and you lose that credibility. Some of us behind the scenes are trying to bring everybody together. That Look, we are in crisis. Mm -hmm. Never in living history have we faced a domestic debt exchange. Never. It's never happened. All the 17, 18 times we've engaged with the IMF, yeah. it's never happened. I mean, see the COVID-19 audit report. It's scandalous, unbelievable, the billions of cities which have gone down the drain. The Ghanaian people are looking at us. Look at this cathedral project. It's now, and I'll be giving you the breakdown, it's now a project which is worth over a billion dollars. And look at the Dollars? Echo. Yes. Not 400 million. It's not 400 million. That is so understated. And I'll show you why in a, when we delve into that. So all of these sums of money at the time of economic crisis. These are the issues that are germane to the Ghanaian people. They don't want to see us, you know. Engage in internal bickering. Yes, engage in all of this internal bickering and point scoring and acrimony. It, it's, 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 it's a major disservice to the Ghanaian people. So I, I think that we should not do anything that will prolong the current situation. Who uh, has much role? The party leadership should engage. Let's all meet and quickly get onto the task of oversight, helping to salvage this sinking ship, the abysmal, clueless, corrupt leadership that has been the bane of this country. We need to focus on that, on dealing with that, aligning with the Ghanaian people, and as it were, earning their confidence and trust. That's what we should be doing. Now, I'm moving beyond the cathedral one, but there is a final question whether you are consulted. You, were you consulted? Mm -hmm. As in, were you in the known before the decision about new leadership happened? Not at all. Um, you are not at no, all? No, not spoken to by anybody. I saw the statement in the media, just like it, anybody else. But when you say leadership, you're part of leadership, right? As ranking member. Yeah, we are part are... of the ex extended leadership. Yes, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, but, but ranking members were not consulted. Just like the entire members of parliament have not been engaged yet. Have you been engaged before? No. In the choosing of a leader? Before. Yes, no. as in your time in parliament? No. 
Never. No, no. That so this is not a string process. You are cleverly trying to get me to pass judgment. No, I'm just asking whether it's not a strange uh, process. Leadership. I am I, seeking I, I, to move I, I, on to Cathedral. I, 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 I would, I would rather you don't lead me into temptation. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel Okujata Blackwa is my guest there. Now, in all fairness, um, I mean, previously I knew you were a Christian. I don't know if that has changed. But you appear to be one of the main stumbling blocks to the building of God's church. That accusation has been leveled greatly. And sometimes when you hear them, you're almost close to being Antichrist. I don't know if you have finally landed in that school yet, but you're almost close to being one. For a member of parliament, with Christian gentleman training, how did you end up this way? So thank you very much for the opportunity. As you have rightly said, you know me as a good Christian mm -hmm. in, in time past. Um, we all belong to the great school, Presec. I'm sure that when you arrived, I left years after you arrived, uh, but you were told about the good deeds of the Son of Man. I was uh, vice president of the Scripture Union. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. Head of the evangelical team. Throughout my stay in Presec, you won't see me at dining during the breakfast period. I will go to the classrooms and evangelize to day students because yeah. day students, uh, yeah, they, don't, they, yeah. they don't come forward for dining. Uh, uh, and so that's what I dedicated all my stay in Presec doing to you know, promote soul winning and to really help um, propagate the uh, good gospel. I, I will admit that um, as Christians, we all are told that it's a constant practice. Mm. The Bible says we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, you, should, you, you must constantly be seeking revival. So I can assure you that despite the natural human frailties and fallibilities and all of that, I'm still a Christian. I have not denounced Christianity. I have not joined any um, non-Christian organization. I'm not atheist, I'm not pagan, you know, all of this. And you see, when people even misquote scriptures and they, they try to liken what I'm doing to Sambalat and Tobiah, they should go read the scriptures very well. Sambalat and Tobiah, these were unbelievers. These were people who, who didn't want their project at all. They didn't want a temple built for God. Uh, I have said, and I've been very, very clear about that, that this project, right from the conceptualization, leadership was not honest with us. They were very deceptive. They were engaged in outright fabrication and concoction. And the evidence is overwhelming. How can a project which is presented as a personal pledge to God that God, if you help me win my election, I'll build a temple in your honor. Mm -hmm. So you won't find it in the MPP manifesto. It was not on any campaign uh, uh, platform. No Ghanaian voter voted for a leader who had said that I'm going to build a national cathedral. And we all make personal promises to God as Christians. And we redeem it. And I remember in my last primaries, my personal pledge to God, if you help me win my primaries, I'm going to pay all the medical bills of those on admission at the Bato Catholic Hospital. Oh, I see. And I did it immediately. They have pictures of me even in my powder, you know, the celebratory mood. Immediately I went there and I did I didn't go call for a deba, say that uh, all my constituents, chiefs and people should come and help me redeem a personal pledge. So fundamentally, when a personal pl pledge is smuggled into the national agenda and becomes a governmental project. That is deception. Don't forget that it was not only the Ghanaian people in terms of the, 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 the general population that were misled. Even the Supreme Court, when James Kwabna Bonfer went to court and said, look, let's be careful. We are noticing that this is somehow becoming a national project. We are a secular state. If Muslims rise up one day and say that we also pay taxes, build us a national mosque, what are we going to do? If the traditionalists also rise up one day and say, build us a national shrine, how are we going to, before, how are we, uh, yeah, how are we going like to address that? The attorney general came to court. I have, I have, I have what, what the attorney general told the eminent uh, jurist, the apex court of the land, page 41 mm -hmm. of 
the statement of case filed for and on behalf of the defendant pursuant to the order of the court dated 19 April 2018. The Attorney General said, we consider the National Cathedral. We respectfully submit that in this case too, the involvement of the government is very limited in nature. The government only proposes to provide a piece of land for the construction of a National Cathedral by the different denominations. The funding for the construction and maintenance of the National Cathedral is to be provided by the Christian community and not government. This is it what is, the Attorney General said. Yes, it is also proposed by government that the cathedral will be available for likely secular uses for some state funerals, thanksgiving services, etc. This is what the Attorney General said. And after this, the eminent clergy, if you go online, viewers can check, Archbishop Duncan Williams, Joyce Ayi, Dark Ward Mills, all of them, said they have been assured by the government that they are not going to use taxes. So there shouldn't be any hue and cry. Indeed, some of them even use strong words that all of you just shut up. We are raising the funds ourselves. Until last year when I dis intercepted mm -hmm. documents which shocked me. Finance minister on the blind side of parliament withdrawing initially 142 million, 25 million for the contractors, Ribade JV, mm -hmm. and another 32 million for David Ajay. So thanks to the vote of Central Committee, when we pinned the finance minister down and insisted that we want the full breakdown, exactly how much has been withdrawn on the blind side of parliament, it emerged that a whopping 339 million Ghana cities, $58 million, if you look at the exchange rates at the time, mm -hmm. on the blind side, without parliamentary approval, I mean, we are building the lost temple. And we know in the Bible, two important Examples will suffice. When Jesus the Christ went to Jerusalem and saw that the lost temple was being used for bribery, corruption, has become a den of thieves, as he described it. Mm -hmm. Righteous anger is the only time Jesus the Christ picked up the whip and whipped people. How he was upset, livid, he overturned the table. And drove them out of that. Don't you know that the house of God must be a place of prayer, a holy place? Then in the Old Testament, we are also told in First Chronicles, when David decided to build a temple, God stopped him. That, hey, you are not fit. You have, you have shed blood. So we know that when it comes to the temple, the house of God, we don't proceed on deception, on blatant falsehood. We don't do that. Where you deceive the, 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 the eminent judiciary. You, you, you deceive the clergy. You, 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 you lie to the entire population. The, so so, so that, the, is, the, that, that, that has been a major, a, major, yeah. a major issue we have had with this. The deception, the lies. But then, the, we've, then we've the also... The element of then, seed then, money... Then, 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 yes. The element of seed money mm -hmm. was made known right from the beginning, right? No. no that it was came, not made known? No, that came later. That After the, all the of the government was going to... Yes contribute seed yes. money to this yes. project. And even that, that came only in the 2019 budget in okay. November 2018. Mm. And if you go take the hands out of that, that, that debate, that period, we in the minority, Seventh Parliament, insisted that you can't just come and say seed money. What is it? What's the value? What even, today, well, even today, what percentage I, of it is a seed I, money? I read online the Honourable, the, the, the Honourable Joyce Ayi, mm -hmm. she's a former minister, I can call her Honourable, yeah. respected uh, Reverend Minister. She was asked only a few days ago, what is the seed money? What is the percentage? She said she doesn't know. A member of the Board of Trustees. But would it not be dependent on the person contributing the seed money here? But that's This not is how, government we are talking about here. Yeah, yes, but that's not, they are the Board of Trustees, the appointees of the government. They should yeah. know. If they don't know. Then who else would know? By and, 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 and it since, tells you. Since the, since the lighthouse incident, yeah. it's pretty obvious that Bolo trustees might not be on the same page on this project at different, different st stages. So it, that's quite clear. What I'm asking is that, mm. was there clarity from the beginning? What percentage we all wanted to put in as a state? So you are in parliament. If the state commits to do something, it is really you who do some devotion of funds to it. Really? Were we told specifically what would be the percentage that would be funded? Because along the line, we got to know $400 million was the entire cost we want to pump into this. But as to whether the $400 million should have 100, 200, or even 10% of that from the state, that wasn't clear to me. We were never told. And Raymond, you have to even go back 
Mm -hmm. How do national projects become national? When did this private pledge to God become a national project? So the deception, look, if you are a democratic leader, mm. you respect the citizens. When you decide that your personal pledge to God should become a national project, you open up to the people, you engage with them. For the people to decide, looking at our economic conditions, looking at the plights of our people, with unemployment being at an all-time high, 12.3% according to the population and housing census. We can't pay NAPCO trainees. We can't pay school feeding caterers. We can't provide food in our, in our secondary schools. You have been running all of these. The schools under trees, all of this extreme yeah. poverty, the, 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 the deprivation our people are going through. We, so we should have that national debate. We didn't do that. So I go back to the basics. You did not show the people respect. You didn't engage, consult, bring the people on board, open up. Then we will have all decided. First of all, do we need it at all at this time? Mm -hmm. I have said in principle, mm -hmm. philosophical as a Christian, even though as a New Testament Christian, I know that uh, building temples and thinking that that's what honest God is an old testament, it's an old school thing. And even the countries we are mimicking. Is, look, the era of cathedrals showing that you have a beautiful architectural landscape. It's past. Yeah. You know, now people are building Silicon Valleys, they are, you know, tech hubs, you know, and, and we, are, we are going back, really, you know, to uh, 2,000, 4,000, 5,000 years ago. But we should let the people decide. We didn't do that. And then, even when we smuggled into the budget that there will be seed capital on the yeah, on, and, 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 and everybody was, was, was taken by surprise. We then said, okay, now you are talking about seed money. We see a major fundamental shift. So how much is the seed money? We were not told. Up to now, we do not know how much that seed money will be. And I then come to the cost. As I speak to you, Raymond, the $400 million that we've been bandying about, and even that, remember that it started as $100 million? That's true. 150, 200, 250, 350. Yeah. The $400 million, it was even the CSO guys, Bryce Simmons and co, who discovered from their own research that it hit $400 million. That $400 million, I have here the latest documents that we have. It's $383.4 million. But there are so many exclusions. Professional fees are excluded. From this 400 million? From this 400 million okay. dollars. Items under consideration, excavations, rock, etc., excluded. Site instructions, subcontract appointments, excluded. Savings on import duties, excluded. Escalation of construction costs due to COVID and global inflation, excluded. Extension of time claims and cost implications of same, excluded. Finance charges on unpaid amounts to, to the main contractor, excluded. Standing time claims from main contractor, excluded. Abortive and reworks costs due to main contractor suspension. As we speak, we know that the main contractor, since the 14th of March 2022, has suspended works. We've entered the 10th month of suspension. So we are going to pay for that. We are going to pay for the reworks that they have to do. The museum displays and the fit out. You know the $400 million? Mm -hmm. It's just the shell. It doesn't include the museum display, the artifacts. That will be brought in there. For which that shonky, shady American called Carrie Summers has been given 28.2 million Ghana cities, six million dollars of our money. And they claim he's doing coordination. So the display, and you know how artifacts can be so expensive. Mm -hmm. So the museum displays and the fit outs are not part of. So when you add all of this, then don't forget that. We also adopted the most reckless part, and now we know from the cathedral statement that they issued, the public statement, that it was the president's decision. Because remember that Bishop Dark, when he resigned in his resignation letter, said that they, he was concerned about the location. Now we know it was the president's decision. And I mean, how reckless and mindless can we be? We demolish all of these properties. We demolish the scholarship secretariat. We have demolished the passport office. You need to add the cost of relocating all of these people to this $400 million, because it's the taxpayer who is bearing it. Yeah. President Akufado hasn't said that, oh, because it was my decision to demolish, I am going to take yeah, care of that. Personally. And I know, passport office, for example, we've had to look for 10 million Ghana cities. We've had to look for that colossal amount to relocate the passport office to where they are now, near GIJ. Then we demolish judges' bungalows. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars relocating them at Cantumens. We are now building a permanent 
structure for them. Millions of Ghana cities. Then we demolish the Judicial Training Institute. The Judicial Training Institute, I have seen the Chief Justice's proposal, $50 million to replace the Judicial Training Institute. You have to add all of that. Then there were two private firms, Comsys. They are waiting for their full look, look, uh, uh, compensation. They are only now being uh, put up at Laboni. Then there's Waterstone Realty. They owned an apartment complex, a luxury apartment complex. Okay. It was demolished. They are in court now, demanding judgment debt. At current exchange rate, what they are demanding is about 200 million Ghana cities. Can you believe that? I see. Then the, we also even veered into a diplomatic enclave, demolished the Malian ambassador's residence. As we speak, the Malian ambassador is waiting for his compensation. We've only now paid for land at airport residential. He's waiting for the construction of his residence. When you add all of this, we are exceeding a billion dollars. I mean, can you believe that? But Look, I'm, if we had... So if, so if, the, if the official estimates, right? This are, this no, these are, 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 are scientific uh, analysis. Uh, yes, I get Very you, objective. this is not the cathedral or that particular body saying that this is what we come to, this is what we are projecting. They are still sticking with it. But you are saying that there are extra costs yes. that's not being yes. added to yes, it. Yes, because their own document... And ought to be considered they, they yes, anyway. their own document, this document was submitted to us in Parliament in December last year. And the, in addition to the $400 million... There the are, issue, there are these, these exclusions. Issues, there are yeah. all these exclusions. They say that the museum displays and the fit-outs, all the artifacts. Mm -hmm. that, because people are not going to travel to Ghana when this building is completed to just look at an empty shell. Yeah. Well, so, so, so and we know the cost of these artifacts. So it's in excess of a billion dollars. I mean, for such a major project, is this how you go about it? Let's have a national debate. A billion dollars is how much Professor Mills and Vice President Mahama spent on the Ghana gas project, which fetches us between 300 and 400 million dollars every year. It's what we went Terminal for. 3. Terminal oh, 3, uh, yes. Terminal uh, 3, uh, Terminal 3, which was. Our last IMF deal was around yes. 993. Yeah, 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 yeah. Think about it. Think about it. All this talk about IMF, this amount is one third. Mm, we are seeking to get $3 billion from the current IMF engagement. This is one third. If you take Terminal 3, just $217 million. UGMC, see how beautiful it is, yeah. about $250 million. Uh, Ridge Hospital. So when you put this in context, I mean, see how many Ridge Hospitals you can get, how many UGMCs you can get, how many Terminal 3s. So this is such a colossal expenditure on the taxpayer. There's a risk at this given. time. And see, and, see, and see how we even went about it. The, the, the lack of candor, the lack of sincerity, the lack of transparency. Look at all the procurement breaches. I raised. The belief is that you, you are basically nitpicking because you are just opposed to this project and you have reduced it to partisan politics. So perhaps in your quest to do some form of oversight, you have actually brought into the fray something that's supposed to be about politics and basically attacking it because of that thinking. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is quite clear in the statements that mostly the issue that you do not in any way reach out to this secretariat. You don't reach out to the people who are in, pro, in this project seeking to find information. What you do most of the time is you run with what you have, which might not necessarily be the absolute truth here. Again, that is not accurate. And you see, when there's a gentleman's agreement, mm -hmm. we engage behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Find out from Dr. Poku Mensa okay. if, if we have an engaged behind the scenes on these matters when I have needed clarity. Find out. Except that you, you don't mostly believe what it find was you are. I mean, of course, when, 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 for example, you come to Parliament and give us a document which, says, all... which says that you have paid JNS Talent Center Limited 2.6 million for contractors' mobilization, in your own words, you can look at it. Yeah. And then I find out that, look, they are not contractors, they have not been given a contract, I have secured their incorporation documents. They say all they do is skills and talent development. Is it not a company that's supposed to have loaned money? Um, the yes. The Reverend Kusibu Atis company. Cock and Boo story. Cock and Boo story. Who, and, who? and we repaid. So this is the 2% we repaid. So, 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 so yeah. I'll come to that. I'll come yeah. to all those Cock and Boo, you know, excuses. So we, we do engage. I do reach out to some of these eminent, you mm -hmm. know, members of the board, yeah. there are times, and let me reveal to you, there are times that some of them call me, that, hey, this thing is, we are alarmed. Is it really true? Do you have any documentation? And they are shocked. 
So, okay. so when Bishop Dark said that, look, it's as if there's another group Team somewhere, on this. you know, and that they are just a front to give the project credibility. I agree with him because I know there have been incidents where eminent members of the, of the board have said, no, we can't believe this. Honorable, can we see what you have? And I have happily, out of respect, I have, I have run to honor their summons and to show them what we have. And they have been shocked. So it's not true that this is just, just, just mere politicking. And you see, let's not forget that as members of parliament, we have a constitutional mandate of oversight. We must do our work. We must ensure that there is absolute checks and balances, that our due diligence rule is carried out in all sincerity and with utmost integrity and efficiency. We are the same people. When there, I, I, I when, 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 when there have yeah. been lapses in mm -hmm. time past, yeah. I remember this famous CNTCI loan yes, where yes. the address was, was a time. hairdressing salon. Mm -hmm. People were up in arms. Say, hey, people are not doing their job. Where is oversight? Where is That's thoroughness? True. Where is due diligence? Recently, even when we got into economic crisis, didn't you hear some people say, oh, we must also blame the minority. Were they not approving these loans? Consistently. Yeah. And then we had to point out that, look, we didn't have the numbers. We have been debating. We have been raising the issue. But they didn't listen to us. So we have to decide as a country, do we want an efficient parliament or not? Do we want MPs to do their work, to, be, to carry out their due diligence, to expose you know, the rot in the system or not, we, we have to decide. Since you're a public officer, would it also be right for people to now question, why do you have so much interest in raising these issues on the cathedral and not on Saglemi, for example, and not on other projects that's currently happening in the country? So predominantly, you are being known as, if it's not President's travels, it's the other issue to do with cathedral. Why cathedral? Is that the only place that there appears to be something going wrong in your estimation or generally? Brilliant. Are those also fair questions? Because really, really very, yeah. very, very fair questions. Those are very fair, 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 very fair questions. And you see, people should go back to my track record, to my debate, to my voting pattern. That's what is done elsewhere. Mm. Don't just judge a man by what he's pursuing currently. Yeah. Mm? Am I not the same person? who, for example, broke the Oslo Chancery scandal and saved this country more than $7 million. If I had kept quiet, I didn't do my due diligence, we would have gone to buy that property, which should have sold for not more than $5 million, at $12.2 million. That's the normal cause of your job as ranking member yes, of the this is, this is Yes. Am I not the one who but discovered? Am I not the one who discovered that when they came to present the 2020 budget in 2019, mm -hmm. that the Volta region was left out in the year of roads? Yeah, yeah, I remember yes, that. Yes, the finance minister came back to Parliament the next day to present a new yeah, that, yes, yes, that, and yes. commended me for that. Yeah. Am I not the same guy? Am I not the same person who discovered that the president has packed the presidential jet, which is in mint condition, has abandoned it, and is chartering ultra luxury jets at 20,000 euros? An hour. Am I not the same person? And I was consistent on that. Am I not the same person who discovered, you know, how much we spent even on the last, you know, um, uh, 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 celebrations of our independence and have urged in this period, only last week, I urged that, yes, even though you are bringing the celebration to, to my the region, region yeah. to the Volta region, don't go and spend another 10.4 million. You must cut down. Because really, I would have even, if, if, I, if I was president now, I would have said that, look, <laughs> let's pass. Then you can just you know, deliver a speech. Everybody should reflect quietly in their, in, their, in their homes. Do we really need to be going to march and all? What are we at this time in this period of economic crisis? So I have said, don't go and spend another 10.4 million. I discovered the amount. I got to know that this is how much was spent. So when it comes to checking the public purse, when it comes to you know, fighting corruption, reigning in a government that has huge appetite for profligacy, I've been very consistent. So, so nobody, so nobody can a, say that, oh, so he, he's, he's, he's only inordinate. passionate about... You're insisting you don't have an inordinate obsession with the cathedral project. No, it's the principles. It's about protecting the public purse. It's about fighting corruption. It's about making sure that there is value for money. This whole project, over a billion dollars, no value for money. I need to ask These you, are the matters that I need I'm to ask you this about. question. I mean, the cathedral's most recent statement talks about, quite regrettably, inadequate funding, I'm quoting from them, has, been, has brought the construction, inadequate funding, uh, has brought the construction work on the project to a standstill 
and they say the major reasons for the inadequate funding include the following. A general misunderstanding that, that it is the state that is fully funding the construction of the cathedral and that within the current challenges, the challenging at economic atmosphere in the country, this is misplaced. The second one it gives also interesting. The general impression being created that the cathedral project is not being executed with the expected high Christian standards of integrity, transparency, and accountability. Is that a fair observation? That's how people will say on the street, now who caused them? Now who caused them? Who created the mess? Who told us it's personal pledge and then it becomes a national project? Who refused to tell parliament how much the seed money was? As we speak now, I don't know if maybe you have got some breaking news. Nobody knows how much the seed money will be. Even board of trustee members don't know. Who caused it? Who has created but have this? Asked, who has created have asked We government. have asked time with that number. Even at the vote of central committee, we asked. Ken Ufriata could not tell us. We've always asked. In parliament, check the hands out. Dr. Dominica Yeni was the first to ask. We were not told the answer. Everybody has been asking. Why is it that this project, we have to intercept documents on our own due to our own special operations before we'll get to know how much? Is this how we execute national projects? Until I intercepted those documents, nobody knew that massive funding has started. So when Ghanaians get to hear this, do you then blame? So they that are, they are being, not participating they, so, in the yes, funding so, the way so, people so, expected. So, so they are being dishonest. They are being dishonest. It is their own conduct, their lack of candor, their lack of transparency. And look, I want to salute. They said the impression the, is being created. That's not, they don't say this real. So, so you see, they are they even, there's a yeah, general impression that's being why, created. That's what I'm saying is dishonest. Really? Yes, because, that, because, not, because look, mm -hmm. let's, l l let me tell you what the facts are, if you have forgotten. All the funding that has been done so far, which we intercepted, which they were not expecting us to intercept, has been done from taxes on the blind side of the Ghanaian people. But they said they have been all, of, all of Ajayi's payments, they were busy paying from the finance ministry and from the, 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 the presidency. I have the documents, chief of staff signing, in making fairness. payments. The payments to Ribadi, mm -hmm. they have been paying. At when, whenever have they transparently told the Ghanaian people that, oh, it's time to pay the architect. We've negotiated with the architect. Mm -hmm. we, we've even asked him that it should, it should work largely gratis. Okay. Look, if I was David Ajay, having gotten all the international reputation and all of that, you know, worked all over in the UK, US, uh, Spain, France, all over the place. Of some repute. Of great repute. Not of some great repute. I will use this project to give back. I will not even have charged the Ghanaian people. How beautiful it will have been. We will have given him a national award. But this became an opportunity for excessive profiteering. No records of procurement law. Remember that on the 4th of July 2022, I raised a right to information request asking mm -hmm. the public procurement authority if they knew about these projects, if there had been procurement laws respected. They said no on the 5th of July in their response. I mean, so. If I, we have a, an RTI that's here to be responded yeah. to by the committee. Yes, but it's the question I wanted to ask you the lost temple. So, can you imagine if we were building something for Satan? Or the LGBTQ com I mean, uh, 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 community? Wow. I mean, can you imagine? Okay. How it will have been. Now, it's unbelievable. There's this point about, it says this work has been made possible through the support of the state. It mentions that. And generous donations by individuals, churches, and institutions, even non-Christians, have made significant contributions towards the construction of the project. And so this is to you saying every person has come from the president. But they're saying here that even non-Christians have participated in doing donations to this project. So it's not only government. So, but, but read on. In their own statement, mm -hmm. they consider the fundraising has been a disaster. Yes, it has been inadequate. That's, yes. yes yeah. Total disaster. I know. And that is why when we, when we intercepted the documents and exposed what was going on, you know, the finance minister claimed that contingency. I mean, when you even catch them. Vote. When you catch them. Mm -hmm. They, they, they will not even as Christians. The Bible teaches us that we should be contrite. Mm -hmm. We should go on our knees, ask for salvation, ask for forgiveness of sins, and even carry out restitution. The doctrine of restitution is, is a major plank in, in Christian theology. Mm -hmm. They don't do any of that. What they rather do is to even come up with more ridiculous defenses. What is contingency vote for 
a project that you demolished properties as far back as May 2018. You knew you were going to do it. You invited your cronies, the architect. You alone chose the architect you, without recourse to the board of trustees. You knew you were going to do this. Contingency, as the finance minister himself said, black stars. Yes, black stars, when they go for a tournament, you don't know how far they will go. Okay. You don't know they will get to second round, quarter finals, or they will get to finals. That can fall under contingency. You can't predict. It's unforeseeable. Mm -hmm. But a project that you know, and multiple layer, you, you yourself have said that this is your schedule by... March 2024, you hope to complete, even though it's been it's a pipe dream, it's a castle in the skies, it, it won't happen, it's not possible. You know, but you had all of these plans. How is it that this becomes contingent? So this honesty, I mean, no respect for the Ghanaian people. There is, however, a response to the recent developments, which is giving some people some happiness. This comes on the heels of the recent uh, letter that was written by the two eminent clergy, um, the, the statement here says in point eight, in response to these developments, the board of the National Cathedral at its meeting on January 23, 2022, made the following decisions. The board is already in discussion with, to engage Deloitte, which accepted to be the auditors when the National Cathedral is registered to commence the normal statutory audit. They are set to do so. And most when companies are registered, sometime around in the third year, you can do that. Then secondly, in addition, the project submitted all relevant documentation to Parliament in December 2022. Perhaps that's what you're referencing. That's if Parliament so desires, it may set up a commission or appoint an independent auditor to review all issues concerning the award of contract procurement, construction works, and financial operations of the cathedral so far. Do you think this is, these are steps in the right direction? So, first of all, I would like to commend Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams and the Reverend is with Annaba, my own pastor, mm -hmm. uh, for that memo. Uh, oh, well, you influenced him and, to and I must commend, oppose it to? I must commend uh, your team okay. for intercepting that memo. Um, I've read it. It's very, very uh, thoughtful, very deep. You see, you know, that a lot of industry and, and, and passion, love for country, love for the kingdom, uh, went into that, that letter. That is what has led to these actions. And I'm, I'm glad that, you see, not only did Otterbill leave very early, Bishop Dark Heward Mill said, look, this cannot continue. I uh, wrote several letters. I remember in July last year, I even broke the story that he had written several letters and mm. he was not being responded to. I was the same person who even, <laughs> you know, drew the public's attention that my research, my due diligence revealed that even though Bishop Dark his effigy was being used for this project. He was on the website and left. all of that. He, uh, Bishop Dag had not been registered. He was not a member of the, the, the board of trustees. He was not a director as the others. So a, a lot of all of these, you know, uh, sloppiness and inefficiency and, and lack of transparency. And then there, there's the other category of blatant corruption, which we have exposed, has led to this. And I want to commend the eminent clergy, that they acted. They didn't just you know, leave matters. Now, that has led us to these, what I call initial first steps. They are just first steps. I would have wished that the board was dissolved. Mm -hmm. And they would all step aside. So Let me not interrupt have... you. I think there's a problem with your sound. So if okay. you could speak up a little bit louder, okay. perhaps it will help us. Okay. Yes. So, so I'm glad that we now have a situation where some first steps are being taken. I call them first steps. That's not all that... You need. If you look at how this project has been scandal dominated, uh, there are important first steps. So the audit by Deloitte is important. Mm -hmm. But I have said that the reports must be made public. Their statement does not give that assurance. Yeah. We will insist that the Deloitte audit is published. It is our money. It's the mm -hmm. Ghanaian taxpayers who have contributed largely to this, more than 90%. We must know. Number two, Victor Kusibuating or Kwabna Edujenfi. Whichever it is, we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the man with two names, two dates of birth. But 30th, this is the first right? 30th December 1969, when he's Kwabna Edu Jemfi. He says that the mother is Ya Jemfua. He has a different team. When, well, you have heard the response that when, you, you relied on expired documents to make the, your claim they, they, they against the man. It's not, it's not accurate. But the only current document is the one that bears Victor Kusibuatin uh, and not Kwabna Edu. It's not, it's not accurate. You are pushing me to reveal 
that I have his Ghana card, and I can reveal to you for the first time, probably this is exclusive to you, that his Ghana card is not Victor Kusibuati. It's not Reverend Victor Kusibuati, as he has at the National Cathedral. It's not. And it is not true that I have been relying on expired. His current diplomatic passport, issued on the 24th of November 2021, which expires on the 25th of November. Mm -hmm. It was issued 25th November 2021. It expires 24th November 2026. It's valid. That's what he's still using. When I tracked his movements to Togo, to Dubai, to Equatorial Guinea, he was using the diplomatic passport. The name in there is Kwabna Edujinfi. Meanwhile, he's appointed as Reverend Kusibuatin. Somebody who is appointed his appointment letter is Reverend Kusibuatin. And our contention is that it's because of the schemes he's operating. That's his modus operandi. That is why you have this dubious payment of 2.6 million under contractors' mobilization. When we cut them out, and they explain and that they took that the loan from the man loan. and they returned the money to the man. That, that should be possible, right? It, it, it's, where is the loan agreement? We haven't seen it. Where is the board resolution? And I can tell you on authority, I've spoken to board members who know nothing about this so-called loan. There are no board minutes. There's no board transaction. So I doubt that claim. I'm not buying it. So why didn't they tell us ab in the documents they brought to parliament? Why did they tell us it was contracted mobilized? If we had not done our due diligence, if we didn't go and dig deeper, and realized that, oh, apparently, Kwabna Edu Jemfi, the third director, is Reverend Victor Kusiboy. So actually, this is payment to a board member, the secretary to the board, paying himself. We will, not, we will not have known. How do they explain the different dates of birth? Two years apart. How do they explain that? How do they explain the different things? I'm sure so, 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 Shraj will deal with that. Yes. Yes. yes and you yes, also but, reported to the police, right? Uh, no, Shraj for now. Uh, you didn't do a no, subsequent report? No, because there have been instances where... But Shraj cannot deal with the different yes, dates. Yes, uh, the criminal aspects. Yes. There's a whole strategy for that that will be rolled out later. There's a whole, because I'm not done with the exposés. I have oh, a lot I more. I see. Yes, I have a lot more coming up. You said this on, Ghana on, card, on, where on, is it? I can tell you that it's not in the name Reverend Victor Kusibuati. So those who are saying that, oh, he's relying on limited documents, I have more than I have put out. A lot more. And this is a grand scheme. Mm. It's, it's, it's a well-orchestrated mm, conspiracy you are to, 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 present, to present a dual personality and to siphon funds. And you are aware, like, yesterday I put out the fact that this same company was at the receiving end of 3.5 million Ghana cities of our COVID cash for so-called purchasing of toilet papers. You can imagine, toilet papers, 3.5 million. No, they do business, unless you know something fundamentally They're, wrong they, with it. They are registered to do skills and talent development. That is the object of the, of the company. How did this company become a multi-purpose vehicle, fighting COVID, granting loans? Did Bank of Ghana give them license, grant them license to be a lending institution? They, they, we, we are not in a banana republic. I get your point. Some but... jungle of a sort. Mm. The laws must be, must be respected. So, look... This, I, I this, need to come this, back to the this, point this you are... This is so scandal-ridden. Yeah, this I, this I project... to the latest decisions of the... Yes. The, the decision to yes. uh, allow so, for so, some progress. So, so, I'm, so I'm saying that uh, quite a positive first step. First mm -hmm. step. But I'm saying that it's not adequate. So the Deloitte audit must be published. We will certainly welcome the demand for a parliamentary probe. Already, last year, I had filed a motion with a number of colleagues... Is before the right honorable speaker. I think he was doing some more consultations with the Christian community and others. Uh, but I expect that when the House resumes, the speaker will look favorably upon that motion and grant it. And then we will have the, the probe. Then there is also um, a third aspect that we'll be interested in when the House resumes. How did it happen that uh, uh, a board member appointed in a different name receives a diplomatic passport in another name? So the foreign minister will be summoned to answer how that happened. What kind of due diligence did they do? Then we are also interested in Kari Summers, that shonky American CEO of the Nehemiah Group, who has taken 28.2 million Ghana cities of our money, claiming he's doing coordination. Mm. We set up the Secretariat for coordination. If they can't do their work, let's close down the Secretariat. What business does Kari Summers have? Is there anything have? wrong with that? Everything, there's, everything is wrong. There was no board resolution. Okay. Board members knew nothing about it. What Kari Summers does is that he goes around raising funds, and he takes a commission. 
it is only in Ghana that we've paid him upfront and we say he's doing coordination. Well, I mean, coordination, what's the meaning of that? 28.2 million Ghana cities. Can you believe that? And no wonder we've done all these diversions. Will you, do you know that from the analysis I have done, the $58 million that was released for this project, only $22 million went into the construction, which is now a Galamse site. Bishop Dad calls it a pit that we've spent about $30 million. He was even generous. It's $58 million, if you read Ken Ofriata's own letter to the vote of Central Committee. Okay. And all we have is that Galamse pit. So these diversions, $28.2 million, 2.6, 28.2 million Ghana cities, 2.6 million Ghana cities. Then you have all kinds of dubious transfers, no recourse to the procurement law. I mean, some of the, some of the actions, you won't believe it. You go to America, you raise 794,000, you come to Ghana and go and blow 790,000 at Kempinski. And only 4,000 was left for actual construction. Can you believe that? But that will be reviewed at a point in time. Can Audits you believe will that? come to whether yes, or not yes. it was appropriate or inappropriate. Yeah. So you cannot say merely because the amount was spent is inappropriate. I mean, you no, understand no, me, right? No, because no, no, I'm, no, no, no. At this point, at this point, I'm, yes. talking, I'm talking about prudence. All yeah. these big, big, do you think they approach Bishop Dak mm -hmm. that we want to use Kodesh for a meeting, a, a symposium? You think he will not have granted? But fundraising at Bishop, that's really at Bishop Dak. I'm talking about the, the Kempinski. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah the Kempinski, true. yes, the Kempinski program. I mean, 790,000 at Kempinski for a Bible museum symposium. Why? Why? I mean, listen, the project might go through some of these difficulties and is still encountering. To you, is the decision not to put it absolutely on hold to do the very things they have listed problematic? So, because it appears some of the clergy, uh, the specific men of God, were quite insistent that let's halt everything mm -hmm. and do the review, but that it does not find any expression in the statement issued. Yes. There is no way it says we have agreed to put this on hold completely, even though, of course, it's halted because of other financial issues. Is that problematic? My contention really is that if you read the statement carefully, I think that they just didn't want to appear to be eating humble pie. Okay. And if you read the statement carefully, they say that after these audits, the parliamentary inquiry, the Shraj, the cooperation with Shraj, mm -hmm. um, they are hoping, read the last paragraph, they are hoping that some confidence will be restored. Yes. And then uh, the, the project can, can be completed. So if you, in, in my estimation... To enable the citizens yes. We, yes. To, contribute to contribute generously yes, exactly. to complete the cathedral to the glory of God. Exactly. So, so if you read that carefully, and you juxtapose that with the fact that as we speak, actual construction is not going on has okay. been suspended for 10 months. So technically, there is suspension. There's nowhere going on. In my mind, there is a suspension now. They just don't want to be bold about and it say, to, 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 and say it to, to eat humble pie. But what I'm also worried about is the refusal of a key member of the board to step aside. Reverend Kusibwad must resign. And I'm surprised that in this statement, the board did not distance themselves from him because look perhaps it's been reviewed you, by Shrad. is it fair that the man is, is deemed to have done something mm -hmm. wrong when a, a competent body of the state has not found him guilty of anything look joe fm yes mm -hmm. there have been incidents you will immediately suspend the person because you care yeah. about your corporate image the reputation there have been, i don't just want to mention it there are several instances yeah. here and it happens in other corporate organizations where, where they cherish their brand their image they immediately take say, you, you are complaining your own statement that people are not believing yeah. you. They are not donating. Your fundraising has gone bad. It's because of these things. You immediately distance yourself. You tell him to step aside. And wait, if, if ever he is cleared by Shraj, which is not possible, then he can come back and join your ranks. That is what they should have done. They if, didn't do it. If these issues are cleared up, would you contribute to the construction of the cathedral? First of all, we need to have a national debate whether we should be doing this project at all. But the project is already underway, Honorable. But it, it's, there, there, there's so many things that... that the, a look, national debate will be water look, under the bridge look, at this time. As we speak, are we yes. happy that Saglemi, which was almost gone? Look at it. That's look, true, look, 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 
Look at the housing deficit we have. Many young people who are struggling. I mean, rent is killing people one year, two year advance. We, have, time is we have affordable housing. Yeah. And we've abandoned Government says they don't have money for it. Can you believe that? And you want me to go and be talking about building? They, they say my time is up, but just 10 seconds of the cathedral is of lights. Be using commercial flights, I'd be using a uh, 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 craft, uh, aircraft. Well, I can confirm to you that uh, he seemed to have repented for now. Um, he hasn't sinned in a long time, uh, pr pr particularly since we entered into this economic crisis. Uh, my latest track, uh, tracking, even when he went to the UAE, he flew commercial. So. Um, whether he's now listened because of the economic, the dire economic situation, or his, uh, uh, his move from Saul to Paul is, is another matter. Uh, we, we wait to see if uh, probably um, our economic fortunes begin to improve mm. and he stays on this responsible path, then we can say that he's really a changed soul. We should have deeper conversations in the future, but many thanks for joining me today. My time is up. Many thanks to you, ladies and gentlemen, for also being part of our front today.